Now, when I started my journey with Homebridge and Hoops, it was really hard to find user-friendly tutorials. And initially, it was very overwhelming for me to learn the ropes, made a lot of mistakes, and eventually got frustrated. So today, I want to cover five mistakes that I made and have also seen people make. Plus, what do you really need to do to fix them? So by the end of this video, you should be comfortable to start your journey with these platforms. So hope you're ready and let's get that fear out. Well, welcome to my channel. And if you're into HomeKit DIY, then there are tons of tutorial videos that I have done. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, just in case you didn't know what is Homebridge or Hoops, these have become the centralized platforms for connecting devices that don't natively support HomeKit, which is Apple's smart home platform. Now, thanks to these centralized platforms, you get over 2000 plugins or integrations supporting different kinds of accessories that even Apple doesn't support officially. And most importantly, it keeps you within your budget to build a smart home using HomeKit. Now, remember, I'm not at all a developer and have zero coding experience. It's just that through trial and error, I am now quite comfortable with these platforms. And also, we have a variety of tutorial videos. So let's take a look at the five mistakes to avoid and also at the helpful tips to improve them as well. Starting at number one, choosing the right hardware. Now, this one's admittedly a difficult one with mixed responses when you're first starting out. And when you ask yourself or even others, What's the minimum hardware? Well, you can start by installing the software on an old PC or a Mac or even a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is initially okay because you are basically testing with a couple of devices. And trust me, it always starts like that. And then fast forward six months later, you've gone from a couple of devices to a hundreds of devices with tons of automation, scripts, multiple add-ons, and just lots of intensive tasks. And then you start wondering, why is this thing not working? Or it's slow and it's not even uh, able to perform well. Worse still, if there's a power outage, that same old device may just die on you and probably leave you in the dark. So to fix this and to run this platform 24 seven with no hiccups, 100% dedicated hardware resources, and most importantly, future-proof your DIY smart home with affordable price points, then if you're looking for minimum performance, use a Raspberry Pi 3B+. This is perfect for entry-level DIY. You will find complete kits with the case as well as the SD card from your preferred marketplace sites. Or better still, you can even get a hoops box. This is an all-in-one package with free remote sessions to set up, install, and configure the box. But if you're looking for maximum performance, use a Raspberry Pi 4 with a 4 GB RAM together with a solid state drive and the Argon 1 M.2 case. This is perfect for complex setups as well as run other network services. But if you want to push it further and if you're looking for industrial standard performance, then you will need a network attached storage or a server. Now remember, these machines are built to run virtual machines and their hardware capabilities are way superior to that of a Raspberry Pi. They are on the expensive side and based on your needs, you will really need to justify its purchase. Now with the setup completed, the next mistake is connecting this hardware to your network. Now when you sign up for an internet service provider, they usually send you a bond and a router combo. But given with the network configuration limitations they come with, you end up buying your own router, which could be a single or a mesh router system. Now, the problem here is when you connect with your PI via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you may accidentally select and join the wrong network and end up having difficulty to locate the device as well as connect with the device using homebridge.local or hoops.local or even the IP address of the device. Now talking about internet protocol addresses, which is IP address in short, 
Every time there is a network restart due to power failure or any update, the device that runs Homebridge or Hoops could be assigned with another IP address, making it difficult to locate it on your network. Now to fix this issue, first, always connect the Homebridge or Hoops device via an ethernet cable first to any available port on the single router. And if you're using a mesh network, connect the device to the main node. Now remember, the main node is always connected to the modem. If your main node has limited network ports, you can always purchase a cheap unmanaged network switch. Connect the device to the switch, use any one of the ports to connect it to the main node. Once the connection is complete, you can go ahead and now power the device. The second fix to this is to always reserve the IP address. Every router has this functionality. Reserving the IP address always ensures the device can be easily located on your network. And if there's any network restarts, it gets assigned the same IP information and it comes online faster. Now with those fixes done, you can now open a web browser and you are good to access the dashboard. Now with the connection completed and the device online, the third most common mistake is configuring plugins, which is a big pain. Now these platforms do not auto detect and add devices to HomeKit. It's not at all your magic box. If you want that, then you must purchase HomeKit certified devices. With plugins, first you have to tell it where your devices reside. Are they on the manufacturer's cloud service or on your local network? For them to work, you have to provide information like email credentials, tokens, or IP information for it to connect and expose the devices to these platforms. The fix for this is before downloading or installing any plugin, go to homebridge.io or plugins.hoops.org and you will see the commonly used com uh, plugins by the community, which are clearly highlighted on both platforms. Clicking on any of them to understand what is really required to configure them. Basically, follow the guide provided by the developer. Secondly, if you're having any issues with the configuration, then go to the issue section of the plugin and search for the issue you have. There's always a high probability Someone has had it and you could find your solution with a little bit of search. Thirdly, plugins that were created and not updated for more than two years, stay far, far away from them. There's a 50-50 chance of them working and are considered as abandoned. Now, the good news is that the developers of these plugins are making it more easier to integrate devices, either from company, uh, from uh, Ring, Nest, Simply Safe, MyQ, and some other ones by using simply your email credential to expose the devices to these platforms. Basically, zero coding is required. Now, the best practice here, and the most recommended one is, install and configure one plugin at a time. Check there are no errors and proceed with the next one. Lastly, I also have a dedicated video on plugin configuration and understanding config.json. With all that said, once you install the plugin and for some reason it doesn't work, which brings us to the fourth mistake of not checking the logs. This mistake is a simple one and this is not keeping an eye on the logs output and see what feedback the plugin is providing and not just when some things go wrong, but occasionally taking a peek in there from time to time. The logs can often provide a lot of information that you may be otherwise be unaware of, such as plugins not working, uh, device connectivity issues or credential issues, or even errors that may stop hoops or home bridge from working or even slowing things down. Both platforms have a dedicated section to check on the logs, which are easily visible on the user interface. It's worth just checking or uh, taking a quick look from time to time just to make sure everything is working properly. And these logs will also be useful when you're asking for help on Reddit, Discord, or Facebook. So it's really good to know on where they are. Now, the fifth mistake is a common one across the board when it comes to electronic devices that use storage. 
and that is simply called backups. This is something that everyone should be doing frequently without a question. And that is taking regular system backups. Uh, it's pretty shocking how many people either don't take backups or simply don't take them at all. Backups are super useful for being able to restore to a point in time when things were working, before something went horribly wrong, or in terms of plugin configuration, or an update made one of your devices, or the platform stop working, or something like that. Executing a backup on these platforms is very straightforward. And if you didn't know, both these systems do auto backups. So for Homebridge, click on the three dots and click on Backup Restore. Click on Download Backup Archive, where the file will be saved in a Downloads folder. And you can also click on Schedule Backups to restore to a previous state. For Hoops, click on the three dots and click on Hub Settings. Click on Backup, where it will be saved to your Downloads folder. You can also click on Restore and retrieve a previous auto backup. But remember, when you reflash the SD or SD, SSD card, you won't be able to restore from the auto backups. That's why you will need that backup file. And there it is, my five home bridge and hopes mistakes that I made and see people make all the time. And trust me, that's fine. Knowing these five mistakes, your journey with these platforms doesn't necessarily need to be a rough start. But at the same time, I am curious. And let me know in the comment section, what is the mistake you've made so far on your home bridge or hoops journey. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe because that's the real driver, that's the real motivator. The more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us. And if there's anything I can help you with, please don't feel shy to leave a comment down below. And most important, uh, without the developers, we wouldn't have the plugins. So please visit their webpage and show them your support as well. And most importantly, don't forget to sign up for the free live class on how to build, manage, and maintain your home computer network. We all have questions that need answers. So my friends, until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.